mission to me is, is being able to consistently make good decisions to optimise my performance within the aviation industry. It has some, some foundations, some bedrock principles, and you have to be disciplined. You have to avoid some of the distractions. You have to avoid, for example, the going out a little bit too late and having a few too many beers. That takes discipline. It's also about having an appropriate level of uh, skill and proficiency consistently. Beyond that, I need to understand my own limitations, limitations of pretty much the aircraft I'm operating and, and the risk that I'm exposing myself to in the operational environment. If I can do that, then that pretty much optimises my ability to maintain situational awareness and make good decisions. I would say that airmanship is really um, a, an awareness of, of the big picture and being able to know, not only being comfortable with what you're doing to a level where you're also completely aware of what's going on around you. Be careful when you're taxiing out that you're not going to blow some wind into a hangar and push rocks and dirt into the, the, the poor engineer's hangar. It's, it's all about being a professional, it's all about understanding what your job is and, and how I can do it better. It's really about being prepared and having that right systems knowledge. The first thing is preparation and planning is the key. It's, a, it's, a, it's an important part of any flying activity. Know your systems. If you, maybe you're using a different GPS this time around. Know your alternates. Have your contingency plans ready. It's also about anticipation. Uh, using those quiet times perhaps to, 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 to think ahead about what are the, some of the things that might bite you. Treat every landing as a potential go around. You know, be constantly on the alert, those sorts of things. It's also about taking an approach to keep yourself out of trouble. You know, what is a better way I can do this? What's a safer way I can do this? Airmanship's planning a descent into an airport and an approach. It can be considering the taxi or landing lights being on and dazzling another pilot, um, considering the other traffic in there, whether it's high speed or low speed traffic anticipating agricultural operators that may not have radios, may be operating contrary to what you consider normal. Um, considering those other operators, whether you consider their actions right or wrong, um, you're working together at the ultimate outcome of safety. Airmanship is the, the art of, of putting all of your experiences and all of your knowledge and all of your habits into, into a sort of bubble that can get an aeroplane in the air safely. A good airmanship to me is, it's essentially common sense. It's essentially doing uh, things in your routine, in your flight, uh, that uh, minimises risk to yourself and to others. Uh, good, good airmanship is good common sense. For example, you know, when we first learn to fly, we're taught when we're flying in the circuit, before we do a turn, what's the first thing we do? You've got to look out the window and clear the airspace before you turn. Yet I've noticed in the industry as pilots become more experienced, they tend not to do these things um, because they're, I guess they feel they're the basics, but the basics are there for a reason. It's good airmanship. Is there anyone out there before we're about to turn? Basic airmanship, basic common sense. Most people want to do the best they possibly can, but haven't got the uh, toolkit necessarily sometimes to achieve that. By helping people out, I guess, with uh, different techniques and tips, they can actually improve the standard. And that, to me, is, uh, is also part of the airmanship, in a sense that if I can um, improve the professionalism of that individual, make him a better pilot, he should have better airmanship to deal with the whatever situations tends to come up. Some of the attributes that stand out to me for pilots that have good airmanship are good preparation, good discipline, and excellent communication. With uh, preparation, that might be a pre-flight uh, organisation, turning up with plenty of time to spare, uh, being well organised, studying the weather, studying the NOTAMs, so there are no surprises along the way. With discipline, it includes things like studying procedures well, knowing what the procedures are, studying checklists well so that you can recall them if they're needed on a flight. Communication, being able to communicate with all the people that interact with you, so that you can get on with the job. These are some of the attributes that I find stand out in people that have uh, good airmanship. It's all about learning from the more experienced guy and, uh, and just taking it on board and not thinking that you know it all. I like to consider airmanship as the consistent ability to make sound judgments and decisions through basically a combination of good knowledge, skills and attitudes to achieve safe flight. 
What I've found is that your average stick and rudder type person, they might not be the most naturally gifted when it comes to flying, the, the actual physical controls of the aircraft, through developing and achieving increased levels of airmanship actually becomes the above average and consistently above average operator within the industry. I've seen naturally gifted students um, that in the early phases of their training start to plateau because they're getting a little overconfident too early and guess what, it's the young guy that's still studying the extra two hours each night because he wants to be a professional operator that's making more errors maybe along the way but learning more from them as he's doing so that actually is starting to develop processes that are going to lead to consistently better airmanship in the longer term. Well, you know, when you, when you talk about airmanship, it really to me it means how to operate an airplane safely. And I'm in the flying school business back home in the USA, so we see a lot of pilots, and, and we're also being involved in the aviation business from the, from the air show standpoint. We see a lot of different personality types, and the truth be told that there's guys that are pushing the limit day in and day out, and you can point them uh, out from a long way. When you push the limits, no matter whether it's in a normal general aviation airplane, if it's in the Red Bull Air Race or it's out there flying an air show, you're going to pay the price in the end if you push the limits too far for too long.